بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمد للہ رب العالمین وصلی اللہ وسلم علی نبی محمد وعلى آلہ وصحبہ وسلم اما بعد قال الشیخ محمد رحمہ اللہ تعالی فی کتابہ کتاب توحید شیخ Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab rahimahullah ta'ala said in his famous treatise Kitab al-Tawheed. He began the treatise in a very simple way which was the way of the Salaf of starting with something very simple in ibarat or you know from their own statements. Of course he didn't begin with his own statements. He began by just say, making a, a brief statement, a brief a title heading, Bab Qawlillahi Ta'ala. The chapter entitled, the, uh, the Statements of Allah, the Almighty. And then he began with ayats of Tawheed, affirming for us, beginning his book, his treaties, with just plain and simple the fact that Islam is built upon Tawheed. That that is the asal of the religion, it's the foundation of the religion of Islam that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all throughout the Qur'an has called us to Tawheed. So that's why the Imam, he began, rahimahullah ta'ala, his chapter, Bab Qulillahi ta'ala, just giving statements from the Qur'an of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala about worshipping Him and Him alone. قَالَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَ فِي كِتَابِ الْكَرِيمِ وَمَا خَلَقْتُ وَالْجِنَّ وَالْإِنْسَ لَلِي عَبْدُونَ I have not created mankind and the jinn except for the purpose of worshipping me. وَقَوْلَهُ وَلَقَدْ بَعَثْنَا فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةِ رُسُولٍ إِنْ نِعْبُدُ اللَّهَ وَجْتَنِبُوا تَعْقُودٍ And we've sent to every nation a messenger ordering to worship Allah alone and avoid those things worship besides Allah, being away from the ta'gud, those things, those people, those entities that are worshipped besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَقَوْلَهُ وَقَضَى رَبُّكَ أَلَا تَعْبُدُوا إِلَّا إِيَّاهُ وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And your Lord has commanded you to do nothing except worship Him alone and to your parents be righteous. That ayat right there will stop right there and reflect. Because all of those ayats there, they contain Tawheed al-Uluhiya, meaning the Tawheed al-Ibadah, the Tawheed of worshipping Allah alone, meaning that we worship only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. So those Verses, and that's really a lot of the treaties of Sheikh Muhammad ibn al Wahhab, rahimahullah ta'ala, especially, were dealing with the act, uh, the issue of Tawheed al Ibadah, the, the Tawheed of Tawheed al Uluhiyah, the Tawheed of the worship of Allah alone, because in his time, that was a lot of the fitna that he dealt with with grave worshippers and the extreme Sufis who were doing all kind of practices. They were slaughtering to, the, uh, to their dead saints. They, were, uh, they had trees that they, you know, similar to the time of the Prophet Sallallahu to the pre-Islamic times, the Jahiliya times, they were seeking barakah from rocks and trees and stones. So they had returned back to the worship of trees and stones. This is just a few hundred years ago in what is known currently today as Saudi Arabia. This is amazing that just a couple hundred years ago that that's how extreme and how far many of the Muslims had gone and, and the lands of the Muslims and how they were deceived by ulama Sul, some of the evil scholars. Those scholars that don't call to Kitab or, or call to Sunnah Rasul but they call to themselves. So 
and they called to their madhab and their way blind following, not based on evidence from the Quran and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, not even open to going back to what Allah says and what His Messenger Ali after the Salatu Wasallam, but instead what their habit, what their traditions had said. Our tradition, we've been going to the stone seeking blessings for years. We've been going to this tree for years. We've been praising and, and supplicating to Saint so and so for years. We've been slaughtering sheep on behalf and leaving a portion to on the grave of, of a wali so-and-so for years, and we can't leave, leave that. And we say, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa anna Muhammad Rasulullah. Yes, they said that statement, but it shows us the importance that we have to act upon that knowledge. We have to act upon true tawheed, and that's what tawheed al ibadah is telling us to do. And that's what Allah subhanahu wa taala is saying. Allah subhanahu wa taala says, "Wa ma khalaqtu al jinn wa al insa lil yabudun." I have not created mankind in the jinn except for the purpose of worshiping me. Worshiping me—that's tawheed al ibadah. That's tawheed al uluhiyah. And we've sent to every nation a messenger to worship Allah alone and stay away from those things that are uh, worshipped besides Allah. That's also Tawheed al ibadah That's also ordering us to worship, to act upon the worship by supplicating to Allah, by praying to Allah, by fasting for Allah, by making Hajj for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَقَوْلُهُ وَقَضَى رَبُّكَ لَا تَعْبُدُوا إِلَّا يَاهُ وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ يَحْسَانًا Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And your Lord has ordered you to worship Him alone. To not, to not worship anyone except Him alone. And to your parents be righteous. You know, obedience to parents. وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ يَحْسَانًا So, all of those ayats there, they affirm for us the importance of worshiping Allah alone and staying away from those things which are worshipped besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they affirm for us Tawheed al-Uluhiyah. They affirm for us Tawheed al-Uluhiyah. The Tawheed al-Ibadah, the Tawheed of worship. Worshiping Allah alone. Not worshiping the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Not worshiping Jesus sallallahu alayhi wa Not worshiping Moses alayhi salatu wasalam. Not worshiping, worshiping uh, any of uh, Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam or any of the Prophets alayhim afdal salatu wasalam. Or, or, or the angels or, or anything or anyone besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But instead, the worship goes to Allah wa Ta'ala alone. Those were, that's what those ayats affirm for us. The second important thing that I wanted to mention, as it is the holy month of Ramadan, is mentioning the, the benefit in the last ayat that I read, وَقَضَى رَبُّكَ لَا تَعْبُدُوا إِلَّا إِيَّاهُ وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and Allah has ordered you to not worship except Him alone. And to your parents be righteous. Since it's the holy month of Ramadan, strive your utmost to be righteous with your parents. And a fayda from that, a, a great benefit we learn from this ayat, as well as many ayats in the Quran, we'll find where Allah, after Tawheed, one of the greatest things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala orders us with is being obedient to the parents. So it shows us the manzil, the makan of your parents. Regardless of whether your parents are Muslim or non-Muslim, they have so many rights over us. And we fall so short, may Allah forgive us and may Allah help us to be better. So try to serve your parents during this holy month of Ramadan and try to strive to do good and be obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and come closer to Him and know and understand Tawheed and call to Tawheed, inviting to Tawheed and dying upon Tawheed. And do not die except in a state of Islam as Muslims. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyya Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.